Let's look at the renin angiotensin system, also known as RAS. When there is decrease in blood flow or pressure to the kidneys, like from hypertension, volume depletion, heart failure, the RAS system is activated in the short term to maintain blood pressure and perfusion to vital organs. The long-term effects, however, has been associated with increased morbidity and mortality, particularly those with hypertension and CHF. To appreciate the complexity of the system, it's best to visualize it in a schematic diagram beginning with the kidney and liver. As I mentioned earlier, decrease in blood flow or pressure is detected by baroreceptor in the macula densa of the afferent arterioles. This stimulates a specialized set of cells called the juxtacamerular cells to release an enzyme called renin. The liver synthesizes and releases angiotensin in the bloodstream, but it's not timed with any acute event. Using the enzyme renin, angiotensin gets converted to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 now travels to the lung where angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 is also known as angiotensin 1-8. This same enzyme also breaks down bradykinin into inactive peptides. There are several pathways that angiotensin 2 exert its effect. The direct pathway actually causes direct vasoconstriction by binding onto AT1 and AT2 receptors, most prominent from the AT1. Angiotensin II also by an indirect pathway can stimulate the adrenal cortex of the kidneys to release aldosterone. Aldosterone then travels back to the kidneys and binds to the mimicocorticoid receptors in the distal tubule and collecting duct. This complex then translocates to the nucleus where it binds to a hormone response element which causes upregulation of the sodium potassium ATPs on the lumen side and the sodium channels on the blood side. And the effect of this pathway is it causes sodium water retention at the expense of potassium being wasted. Angiotensin II can also stimulate the posterior pituitary of the hypothalamus to increase vasopressin, thereby increasing the amount of water being reabsorbed. Angiotensin II can also stimulate the sympathetic system to increase the amount of catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. This increases cardiac stimulation and vasoconstriction. Interestingly, they found that in the last decade that angiotensin 1 goes back to the heart and kidneys where angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 1-9 by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme 2. There are no known effects of angiotensin 1-9, but angiotensin 1-9 gets converted to angiotensin 1-7 by the same enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme found in the lungs. This leads to vasodilation. Interestingly, angiotensin 2 is also a substrate for angiotensin converting enzyme 2, which eventually gets broken down to angiotensin 1-7. It's also important to note that ACE inhibitor has no effect on this pathway or with bradykinin. It is unclear of the true benefits in regards to the vasodilatory effects of this pathway. Perhaps it's to maintain stroke volume and or perfusion to the kidneys. In studies where they actually disabled the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, they have found that it's actually necessary in the protection from ARDS or acute lung injury, or in some cases, they actually found that it's a receptor for the SARS virus. Let's wrap up by mentioning how medications affect the system. There are direct REN inhibitors, such as aliskern or tecturna. There are ACE inhibitors that basically block the angiotensin converting enzyme which increases bradykinin. If you recall, bradykinin is associated with the dry cough. There are angiotensin receptor blockers that block the angiotensin II from binding to the site of action. And there are also medications such as spironolactone that blocks the aldosterone pathway. This is the RAS system as we know it today. It will continue to evolve and so will this video.